It is the Commander's Report Mailbag. I am your host, Jack Sperry, and today I get to answer your questions directly from you guys, the Commander's fans here of the Commander's Report community. And if you guys want to join the most interactive Commander's fan community here on YouTube, that's what we provide to you guys here on the Commander's Report. We give you guys an opportunity to come together every single week, Wednesdays usually, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And, you know, we come together and we talk some Commanders football, and you guys get an opportunity to ask me questions on these mailbags every week. So make sure you click that subscribe button and then join us 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays for our Commanders Report live shows. Appreciate all of your guys' support. With that, let's get to the questions. First one comes in from Commanders Electric. Says, will the Commanders actually be a Texans-type team? Um, I think that... Yeah, Probably not. <laughs> now, nobody expected the Texans to do what they did last year, so maybe the Commanders do what they did last year. But I, I'll just say that it's very rare that an NFL team has a new head coach, a new quarterback, and a shaky roster heading into the year, and they make the playoffs and win a playoff game. I think that those expectations might be a little bit too high. Um, my expectations heading into this year is that this team shows promise, all right? I'm not necessarily too worried about the wins and losses and the numbers in those columns. I'm more worried about, okay, is this team competitive? Is this team buying into the culture? Is Jaden Daniels looking good uh, and looking like a potential future superstar? Those are the things that I am worried about here, uh, Commanders Electric. And, you know, if they get 10 wins and they make the playoffs and they win a playoff game and, you know, they kind of do what the Texans did last year, great. Um, but, you know, that's not necessarily the measuring stick of success uh, that I have for the Commanders this year. Then we got one from Jonathan Taylor. says, did the Commanders make a mistake not to keep K.J. Henry? I thought he had potential. Uh, was, was there something off the football field leading to his release? Um, I just didn't think he was the best overall fit for the new, uh, for the new defense, honestly. Uh, it's a completely new kind of system, and I didn't think K.J. was, was really a great fit. Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you, Jonathan Taylor, uh, you did have that sack against Jacoby Brissett untouched in the preseason. I think a lot of people thought after that he was going to make the roster, uh, but it's been pretty apparent. Dan Quinn and Adam Peters, they're cleaning house of all the Ron Rivera people and the people that they drafted, man. They, they want their guys in, in their building and their scheme, and K.J. Henry, unfortunately, didn't fit that bill. Then we got one from Fan Quinn. Nice name. Nice, nice name there says, why were the commanders out on Brandon Ayuk? Seems like he could have been got for a steal. So I've said it on the show multiple times here. Um, I would have personally gone after Brandon Ayuk if I were the commanders. I believe uh, Adam Peters said in his uh, press conference last week, we're trying to build a team, not collect talent. But it's like you have to build a team by collecting great talent. And you could add Brandon Ayuk for probably two second-round picks and a receiver um, but, you know, another thing is, based on the reporting, San Francisco was only willing to trade for Terry McLaurin. They didn't want Jahan Dotson. They didn't want anybody else on the commander's receiving room. They wanted, Jahan, they wanted Terry McLaurin in a second, and that was their offer. And I think that, as commander's fans, we can kind of all agree uh, that that wasn't worth it for the Washington commanders. So let's say you guys. Let me know down there in the comments section. Should Washington have traded Terry McLaurin in a second-round pick in exchange for Brandon Ayuk? Give me a yes or a no. Personally, that is a hell no. But let me know for today's pinned comment. In just a second here, I'm going to be telling you guys about our sponsor at Factor Meals. And while I'm talking about Factor here, find that pinned comment at the top of the comment section and give me a yes or a no. With that, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Factor Meals. And with fall right around the corner, guys, fuel up for those crisp fall weekends. Football, college football on Saturdays. And then, of course, NFL football on Sundays. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Pumpkin patches, all that great stuff. Leaves falling. It's a great season. And you guys got to fuel up for that with Factors. No prep, no mess meals today. Meet your wellness goals in time for fall thanks to Factors menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and even Keto. Factors fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What the heck are you guys waiting for with 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week? You'll always have new flavors to explore. 
Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert and stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. So you guys can head on over to factormeals.com slash commanderschat50. It's right down there in the bottom of your screen. And use code commanderschat50. That's all one word, commanderschat50, to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code commanderschat50 at factormeals.com slash commanderschat50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is still active. Uh, big shout out to Factor Meals for sponsoring today's edition of the Commander's Report. Going from Jeffrey Lake says, who will lead the team in interceptions? Um, I have a feeling it's going to be either Quan Martin, the free safety, or Mikey Sainerstil, the slot corner. Um, you know, I think that interceptions is kind of based on opportunity, so who knows who's going to get the most opportunities. Um, but those are two guys that really have a nose for the football. If I have to pick one, Right now, I'm going to go Mikey Samerstill, the rookie, wearing number zero for the Washington Commanders. Then we got one from Bandit1x. Says, will Emmanuel Forbes get traded or released after this year? Um, we're going to have to see how he plays, man. Um, if he doesn't play well, I don't know if anyone's going to want to trade for him. Um, but release a, a release could be on the cards if he's really bad once again. Um, but, you know, I'm going to go into the season with a positive frame of mind. I'm going to have an open mind to Emmanuel Forbes. I'm going to hope that he has a good season. Uh, and I guess we'll see how things play out. Got one from uh, Jax here, or Jakes, I don't know uh, how to pronounce this one, says, who are some players you think will shine for our defense? So I think that the, uh, you know, what I'll say here, Jakes, is that, uh, you know, Mikey Samer still in the slot. I think he's going to be a top five slot defender immediately. He's a really good football player. Um, I also think that the linebackers, I think Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner, perfect fits for this scheme. Um, I think that, you know, uh, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne are going to play really well as well. And, you know, I think that this defense is going to give them opportunities uh, to get sacks, to get pressures, to, to, to create confusion, to create turnovers for opposing offenses, man. That's what Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. do. Uh, maybe the, the roster itself and the talent in the outside cornerback room isn't the best. Maybe they don't have the best edge rushers in the world, uh, but they're going to do a lot of creative things to make this defense go this year. Going from Justin Ballou, uh, sounds like a fraud to me. Says, is there any anyone the commanders cut that you were hoping was going to make the final roster? Good question, Justin. Um, I was kind of hoping that Martavis Bryant was going to make it. I'm not going to lie, man. That was that was a lot of fun. Uh, seeing him get that touchdown was really really cool. Um, but at the end of the day, that's the way the NFL works. He was too old to be a, a depth piece, whatever it would have been for him. So uh, makes sense, but definitely wanted him to make the team. So let me know down there in the comments section, any players that got cut by the commanders that you hoped would make this team. I probably, I'm, I'm expecting a lot of KJ Henry's down there, maybe some Trace McSorley's, maybe some Martavis Bryant's. Let me know down there in the comments section. Going from Commander's Prod says, any more additions to the team you could see? Honestly, Commander's Prod's probably not. Um... I think that they like their roster right now. I think Noah Brown was kind of that last piece that they felt like they needed um, after trading John Ridgeway. So personally, I think that they're going to go with what they have into the season. We'll see what happens. If they make a signing, we're going to be getting you guys a video here on the channel. So make sure you click that subscribe button. But in terms of what I think, I think they're going to stay put. Now make sure you guys click that thumbs up icon if you haven't already. If you can't wait for week one, just like us. Here at the Commanders Report, of course, you get, you get that beautiful Tampa Bay, um, you know, at Raymond James Stadium for week one, Jaden Daniels' NFL career. It's going to be a great time here on the Commanders Report for our live watch party. So make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you can't wait for week one. Going from Dan Snyder's Burner here says, uh, what range of outcomes could you see for the Commanders record this year? So personally, I think 10 wins is about the ceiling. Make the playoffs. Maybe you compete in that playoff game, but who knows? Um, probably, this, probably the floor is five wins. I, I believe in Dan Quinn's culture enough where I don't think they get below five. Um, but, you know, it might be a re rebuilding year, right? It might be a foundational rebuilding year. And, you know, sometimes that's okay for, for an organization to go through those types of years. Not every team can be the Houston Texans and turn everything around in just one offseason, and that's perfectly okay. So sound out for me down there in the comments section. What is this team's ceiling this year? What's their floor? Let me know down there in the comments section. I think 10 wins is the ceiling. Make the playoffs. 
Floor, probably five wins. I think that that's probably the range for this football team this year. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. That'll be it for this week's mailbag. Thank you to everybody that submitted questions on this week's mailbag on the live show. Um, until next time, guys, I really do appreciate your support, and hail to the commanders.